Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. You know, I get a real kick out of these politicians and stuff that call and, and act like that they're going to make all these tax dollars off of making marijuana legal or, or proposing some type of legislation that they can put it out there in the free market society to for taxation and they start running all these figures in their heads about how much money they're going to make on this and make on that and that they don't realize that the price structure that they're basing their taxes on is in an illegal market and this is not going to be the case once you legalize cannabis uh, the this is a black market value that they've got on the price of cannabis worldwide right now and it's it's pretty much across the board about the same everywhere you look around the country and around the world for what people pay for the high quality cannabis that they choose to smoke. The, uh, what, what they fail to realize though is the loss of revenue by not having the hemp industry legal and all the products and stuff that this plant would generate and how much money that this is going to bring about. They get hung up on that, oh, marijuana is selling out here right now for $500 an ounce, but if we tax that, just think of all the tax money that we'll bring in. But they don't, they, they fail to, they're blindsided by the fact that this, this price is going to fall off the charts. It's going to go down to around 8 or $10 an ounce for the good qualities and, and even less for the, the inferior qualities. But they're, there's a systematic approach to this because it's just like a person in business. There are very few businessmen out there that would want to go and make one giant sale and know that they made a lot of money on it and then not make any more sales for the rest of the time they were in business. They just certainly, they wouldn't be around very long and the money they made on that first sale would just go right out the window before too long. It's the best way in a business approach is to keep steady sales and stuff. And this is what you will see when cannabis is legal because the price will fall down to a reasonable level to where people who in the past could not even afford to smoke the, these different varieties and stuff and use the products from them could now be able to afford to. So you'll have more of the population being able to buy these products and as a result the revenues the generator will be much greater not only from the taxation of the retail sales but just the products in general and what that amount of money is going to do by putting that into the economy. Now, we, we, we talked about the uh, Hemp for Victory uh, episode here a few, uh, few episodes back. We talked about the amount of fiber that could be produced from an acre of land. It's around 1,100 to 1,500 pounds per acre. And this was back in a time when farming techniques were really sort of ancient compared to, to today's standards and stuff. So these yields per acre certainly will go up with the different types of uh, modernized farm equipment that we have, and it'll be less manual labor. The, the, the processing of the hemp fibers and whatnot, all that is mechanized now, much, much the same way the cloth and textile industry is taken as the inventions came across the, in those various fields and stuff. And so we, our, our, our product generation from this plant is gonna be tremendous. And it's not gonna just be in the form of fiber or anything like that. We'll be able to stop cutting 50,000 trees a week to just to print the Sunday paper in America that people look on their doorstep. Hemp paper is also, it's, it's stronger, it's, an easier, it's easier to make. It, it's made by a less polluting process than the, than the regular paper. The, uh, and it's been proven that you can grow four times the amount of cellulose on a given acre of land in a given period of time than you could any kind of tree or other form of cellulose that, that, that you're going to use for the paper. So there again, the cost would be four times cheaper. Uh, and by making the cost four times cheaper, people are going to buy more of it. And there, this will bring more taxation and more revenues into the coffers for these states that are suffering. We're, we're just being absolutely ridiculous about this whole thing. But the paper, the textiles, those types of things, these are just one avenue. If you look at the green fuel that could be produced from the cannabis plant itself, and, and it, this would be a total replacement for the amount of gasoline that this country sucks up in a given day to take their cars up and down the road. We could develop a diesel engines that burned diesel fuel that was made from this, from this plant. Henry Ford was doing it back in the early days when he first came out with his Model T and stuff. They had developed a fuel from the hemp plant. It's an, it has a natural oil in it that's insoluble in water, so it, it becomes a great fuel. But the, this is just one breakdown. I'm going to kind of give you a brief synopsis of how this can happen. What you will do, you'll take the inferior varieties of cannabis, the ones that, in other words, that have a low THC value. These are the ones that you'd plant for the hemp product. 
and these are planted at a rate of 40 seeds per square foot. And the reason they're planted so close, this allows the fibers to, to the plants to grow very close together and it causes them to elongate and they grow very tall that way. And, and the taller they grow, the stronger the fiber is. Now in a situation where you were going to use for smoking and for medicinal purposes and stuff, these would be planted one plant, one seed every nine square feet to allow the plant to bush out and really make a nice size plant. But these, these varieties, you would save the smoking varieties would be your stronger varieties, the real, <clears throat> the, the, the Asian varieties, the ones that have really high THC content. That way the people who do choose to smoke them instead of using them for cooking or, or other forms that, you, that you'll be able to generate from it, they will actually not have to smoke as much to get the same effects. The Mexican marijuana today is, ranges about anywhere from probably one to 4% THC. And you look at these Asian varieties where they're up over 10%, some of them up to even 20, 25%. And these are the ones that you would grow to produce the hashish and the smokable cannabis for people. These would not be used, this would not be a good variety to use for the hemp production because uh, it's just a completely different plant. They grow shorter, they're, they're meant to grow s smaller, and their, their main purpose is the flowering end of it. Now the, the Mexican variety, I think what would be good for it is to use it to produce the fuel because they do have around two to 4% THC, which itself is an oil. And the leaf concentration also has the, the uh, oil inside of them. And so it makes, it makes good sense to use them as an alternative fuel. This is something that you can grow without, with very little preparation in the soil. Every year you grow it in the soil, it's going to improve the soil from the leaf litter fall that goes into the soil, the organic matter that's gonna build up over time. So you can pretty much take a, a soil that you can't really grow food crops in and produce fuel just by growing this plant. And then after several years of growing this plant in that field, you've actually turned it into a food producing soil due to the organic drop from the leaves as they grow. The flower tops are the ones that, that has the highest concentration of the THC. So this, the harvest itself would be much like the grain is harvested on the top of the wheat fields and stuff like that. You don't take the whole plant, you take the grain flower portion on the top. That's what they use to make the bread and stuff. In this situation, it'd be the same way. You take the flower tops and these will be processed for fuel. And uh, in a given acre, we could probably produce anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 gallons of diesel fuel. Now you can run a lot of cars on that in just one acre. And the fact that we have so much farmland and so many farmers are, are, are their hands are tied these days because they're just overwhelmed by these big corporate farms and stuff. This would be an avenue for them to start making revenues and stuff. And they could generate, you know, several hundred dollars per acre. And you look at these small farms, most of them are around 50 to 100 acres. This is a, a substantial amount of, of, of revenue and would be a way that these farmers could make a comeback. And of course, the fuel is just one thing. This is just a, one of the methods that we can free ourselves from this burden of foreign oil we, not to say that we don't need to have oil in our society because there's a lot of products that are made from the oil and we should continue that. But if we have a better source and one that we can produce cheaper and certainly burns cleaner and certainly not going to have the pollutant side effects as, as the hydrocarbon does in many situations, this is the route we should go. And then when you look at the taxation and the revenues that could be generated, the jobs generated from that and that money going back into the economy, it's a win-win. We are, we are absolutely stupid to get hung up on this idea that we can get all these tax dollars if we just tax the marijuana smokers. I mean, it's just absolutely stupid because once cannabis is legal, the price is gonna fall off the map and the smoking part of it is gonna be the least revenue generating. That'll be on a scale of one to 10, <clears throat> 10 being the worst, the least producing, that's where the smoking cannabis would be. When you look at the fact that the hemp industry is gonna generate the clothing, generate the, the rope, the fuel, plywood, paper. I mean, just the list just goes on and on and on. And then you look at the medicinal side effects of the cannabis and stuff, how you'll be able to replace about 85% of the pharmaceuticals out there <clears throat> and do it for people without them getting addicted to psychotropic drugs and hardcore narcotic drugs. They'll be able to replace all of those with this plant. Look at the revenues that's going to generate and the, and the areas of research and the amount of dollars that that will be put back into the system. It, it's win-win. And the very fact that cannabis smoke
smoking use in any form has never sent anybody to the hospital even. There's not been one recorded hospital visit for cannabis o overdose since the dawn of time. You can't say that about any of the other drugs, including the two that are legal that kill the worst and kill the most, and that's alcohol and cigarettes. There are numerous, 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 thousands and thousands a day of people that make emergency room trips due to the effects of these two drugs that are legal. So to say that cannabis is going to be a public scare and it's going to be a big problem if we make it legal, it's just absolutely false. We've had 50 to 60 years in this country of a substantial amount of the adult population smoking cannabis, and there's never been one incident where even one of them have had to go to the hospital. I don't think you could have a better research ground in a research field and an amount of data to prove that cannabis is a very, very, very safe substance. And the fact that we keep writing this DEA, oh no, this is a dangerous substance and all of that, and we've got to have all this police control, and oh yeah, it's causing Mexican gang violence in Mexico, and thousands of people are getting killed over it because they're trying to bring it across the border and all. It's just wrong, and we as a people, we're better than that. We're As a society, we're better people than that, and we should always try to strive and do what's right. And this thing has been wrong from the beginning. When Anslinger and them in the 1937 came up with the Marijuana Tax Act, it was wrong then. And the scientific community, the medical community, everybody tried to tell them, look, what are y'all doing here? You're, you're just so far off base here. Nobody listens. Same as today, nobody's listening. We've got to stop this foolishness. If you're really sincere about getting the economy turned around, if you're really sincere about producing products that are safe for this country, safe to use, cheaper to use, free us from the foreign dependence on oil, this types of things, we need to legalize cannabis and we need to do it today. We don't need to be waiting for Arnold Schwarzenegger's decriminalization bill, which is 40 to 50 years too late. This takes effect in January. It's just bull. They're trying to downplay the Proposition 19 vote that's coming up. Marijuana, cannabis, however you want to call it, is an herb, and it needs to be completely legal. It needs to be introduced into the free enterprise, the free marketplace, and let us see what would happen. I think many, many, many people are wrong in the fact that their predictions of revenue, they're basing on the smoking cannabis, and that is just the bottom of the bucket compared to the products and the amount of taxation and revenue that we're going to see from the industry as a whole. So join us on the next Cannabis Corner, and we're going to delve into the specifics of, of these various products, what you can actually yield from an acre of, uh, if you decided to grow cannabis. And we're going to start a discussion, too, of the different varieties of the more potent varieties that are used for smoking and medicinal purposes around the world. But join us again, and thank you for tuning in.